Look, I don't care how much you love your partner. Paramount loves the Turtles more. Ten years, two shows, and five, yes, five movies. Paramount will not stop till we drop dead, and will probably keep making movies long after that. Some of the stuff may be trash, while others are whatever, but if this is what it takes to get bangers like Mew and Mayhem, it is worth it. Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles Mew and Mayhem is the kind of movie that reminds me why I love animation so much. Do I wish the studios were paying writers and actors more? Definitely, but donate using the link down in the description and we can all go help them out. Cause everyone deserves their full paycheck on this one, and a little extra. Mayhem might honestly be one of my favorite adaptations of the Turtles so far, as from the animation to the actor's insane chemistry, this is just a film that perfected what it was going for, even if what it ended up doing wasn't your cup of tea, you still gotta respect the craft. I wouldn't call this movie perfect or even pretend it's a contender, as let's be real, Across the Spider-Verse has no challengers. But Mayhem is gonna go down swinging. So let's break down the film, what it did well, what it did really well, and in spite of how much I like it, some of the choices it made may in fact turn off some viewers. Throw in a petty tangent about what they did to April, but otherwise, we're just having fun with this one. So, let's dive in. Now the first and biggest thing you gotta talk about in this film is the characters. But we really just gotta give props to all the actors who played the four main turtles. As here, they actually feel like actual teenagers. Ever since they were created, the teenage in the TMNT has long felt like more of a label than an actual description. As most of the incarnations of these characters, you could honestly say they're just stoners in their 20s and nobody would question it. Especially when you factor in like the steroids some of these guys are taking. But this right here is by far far the youngest feeling interpretation of the turtles, with it absolutely being to this film's benefit. As some stories, yeah, they work having the turtles feel a little bit older, but here though, these turtles feel actually young, as so much of this film is a coming of age story, so having them feel like genuine teenagers really helps sell it. They're not just 18 and a little bit goofy. The turtles here are dorks. They are dumb, they are extra, and just the right amount of immature. And what really nails it for me is that for the turtles, for teenagers, there is always this great dichotomy between what they want to be and who they actually are. And the turtles here capture that perfectly, as Leo, Rav, Dontello, Mikey, they all know who they want to be, but they are struggling to fill that niche. They actually feel like an actual group of kids and family, not the grown-ass adults that they get portrayed on TV and YA novels. Like Raph here is approaching Eric Cartman levels of violence. He's got issues, and he is trying way too hard to be cool in front of his family, pretending that he doesn't care, but you can always see how that is just a little bit of an act. Donnie, meanwhile, is a giga nerd who is also sassy as hell. He may be smart, he may be wearing glasses, but he is joining on the fun like everybody else. While well, Mikey is a comedian who is trying a little bit too hard to be funny, but isn't trapped at the bottom of the social totem pole on account of Leo being a narc. Leo, probably one of my favorites in this entire movie, which kind of shocking for me as he has never been my favorite turtle, but Leo here is really trying to be the mature leader. But again, he is a kid, and it makes it feel like it is just performative maturity, making it all the more hilarious. As we all knew a kid like this, we all knew all of these kids, and that just makes it feel so much richer to me. In a lot of TMNT shows, so much of the turtles are built around certain archetypes that the characters are just kind of known to be. They're just built like this, we don't need like a giant explanation. Nation. But rather than archetypes, here they genuinely feel like they are their own people. They may evolve later into the versions that we know and love, but the youth and how they are portrayed makes it so that none of them feel like they are set in stone. They are constantly changing and adjusting who they are as people, and that really helps set the tone of the movie, with their lingering issues going a long way to explain for each of them why they are the way that they are. These four are every group of middle school boys I've ever met, as in the accuracy is just too real as we watch them goof off, with each of them taking their turn to do something dumb cause youth. Leo may try to get things back on track, but the second he gets a crush, he is just as bad as the rest of them. Everyone is giving everybody shit, and they really heard about criminal killing people, and they thought that was badass. Which is the most teen boy thing I have ever heard. The turtles here are just so incredibly endearing. They make this film work, as it makes it so easy for us to understand their desire to be accepted by society, and have the fun school adventures that TV has promised them. The pathos wouldn't hit nearly as hard if they felt like adults pretending to be teens. So the fact that they feel as young as they do is the secret that lets these versions of the turtles stand out, and together, 
This is probably the best family dynamic out of the entire franchise, especially when you factor in Splinter. Master Splinter in this is just a stay-at-home dad. Yeah, he's wise, he knows kung fu, but they really play into the burnt-out dad aspect. He loves them, he wants the best, not always the best at parenting, but Splinter is just as much a main character in the story as they are. As you watch his justifiable paranoia get the better of him, and while the boys are off having their own adventures, Splinter is the character that has the biggest emotional change in the movie, as Superfly is more of a dark reflection of Splinter than any of the turtles. And by the way, Superfly, great villain. When I heard that they weren't doing Shredder, I was honestly relieved as he is iconic, but he is used too often. We gotta give some other people cred. But when I saw Superfly, I just thought, really? The Fly? Not even Baxter Stockman, just The Fly. But it turns out he is one of the best parts of the movie. Ice Cube voices him to perfection, conveying natural charisma and warmth in one moment before being the menacing terror that he is in the next. You're never entirely sure if you're supposed to like him or fear him, which works amazing for his character. As this movie is centered around acceptance, about the turtles wanting to be accepted by human society, to have all these mutants who have been through the same thing as the turtles, it creates this interesting moral dilemma for the turtles. While it's not the most original of plot lines, I definitely think it is very compelling in how it's executed. As the characters, the chemistry, it is all going off, and it makes you get locked into wanting to see what's gonna happen, and what these characters are all going to choose. The movie may not have the most original plot, some of its jokes may miss, as this movie is really into jokes about milking and Attack on Titan. But the bond between this family, between all the characters and just how well they are all written, makes this film worth seeing even if the animation wasn't fire. Speaking of which, the animation is fire. Now this is something that I can see turning some people off though, as personally, I love the art style for this film. It's a grungy combination of 3D animation and 2D effects that honestly reminds me more of Mitchells vs. the Machines than Spider-Verse, which shouldn't be a surprise since Jeff Rowe, the director of Mayhem, also co-wrote the Mitchells. I adore how this film looks, as in a movie about Mutants, it's nice to have the mutants actually look kinda nasty. These are not the cute monsters that you just want to go and hug. These guys are kind of freaks. You see these things and you understand why people want to run. And that really adds realism to why all the humans just are terrified of all these people at first sight. But the real shocker of how everything looks is how the humans do. As they look just as fucked up as the mutants. And I kind of love it. So many of the humans have these misshapen asymmetrical faces. It really gives a sense of just concept art having come to life. And I am vibing with it. Especially since after years of every other animated project, I feel like it's terrified to have anything other than adorable. Having the character designs here to be as weird as they are is a breath of fresh air, though I can see this turning some people off. This style was a choice. These designs aren't automatically adorable, and if you have kids, I can see some of them not really liking it. But for me, I love the look. I love how weird they are. Weirdly enough, they remind me of early stop motion, where from how they look to how they move, there's just this little bit of imperfection and jank there that adds so much life and texture to the film, which really had just helped solidify it as its own style. You can look at any character from this movie and immediately know where they're from, which is something you can't really say about a lot of other mainstream projects. So I just end up loving it. I love how it bends and breaks the 3D art style to have like 2D shapes. It looks amazing. Factor in with just how filthy the city looks, and it all just blends together to create this nice grungy aesthetic. This is a movie about teenage ninja mutant turtles and a little bit of body horror. The fact that it's able to lean into it as much as it does is amazing. Especially the final boss. That thing was nightmare fuel incarnate, so of course I loved it. And something else I loved, but there is a caveat here, is the music. The soundtrack for this film is perfect. With an 80s inspired soundtrack and lots of old school rap, the selections all complement the art style perfectly. Though it's not the most memorable thing for me, I wasn't left jazz thinking like, oh, I need to get the song for that moment, like I am with some other films. But overall, it's fantastic. It perfectly captures every emotion that it's going for, from sad moments of just the boys to kick ass action scenes and intros. I will say though, and this is just a me thing, I'm kind of getting real tired of the obsession with the 80s we've been seeing in media. I know it works for the turtles, and it works here, but I'm kind of over synthesizers. That's just me, but let me indulge in a different rant now, as I am just kind of over what the Team NT franchise has been doing with April for the last couple years. As a character, she has been great, honestly. Like, she has been so fun in so many different shows that she's been in so far. April O'Neil is by far the most malleable character in the franchise. You can do whatever the hell you want with her, and it just has to be fun. But 
Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Which in this case, is how the franchise is passing April around the family more than Bad Girl. Romance has never been a huge thing for this series, but in the last 10 years she has been shipped with nearly every brother of the TMNT. In 2012, she had a horrible love story with Donnie, Mikey was drooling all over her in the Bay films, and now Leo has a crush on her in this one. I think the crush is fine in the film. It is the impetus to make Leo decide, oh no, I want to join the human world. And I mean, if you want someone to break rules, hormones is as good as an excuse as any. And April here is not into him, just to be clear. Leo is just crushing on her. She just thinks that this is a friend thing. But on a meta level, seeing how every new version of the Turtles besides Rise has had some kind of turtle April romance has me just throwing side eye. It's not awful, it's not terrible, minus 2012 and Michael Bay, it, but it, for me, it's just kind of weird. That's true, it's not enough for her just to be her own character or to be a friend of the Turtles. We gotta edge Scalies here and have the Turtles be in love with her just cause she's the most prominent female character and they might as well ship her with one of them. And that just kind of what it always feels like it boils down to. They don't have anyone else, so they might as well have it be her. I'm fine within the film. It doesn't ruin anything for me as it's only really prominent in the beginning and a quick joke at the end. But this is a trend that I am fully over. But that is a personal thing and not a reflection of the film. Mutant Mayhem is a blast. The animation is killer. Everything about this film is just peak. The Turtles have never been so endearing. And while Paramount may be milking this franchise for all it's worth, I am ecstatic to see more stories about this group of Turtles. We know there's a sequel and TV show in the works, and I cannot wait till it comes out. Go check out this film if you haven't already. It is absolutely worth it. Though again, I will say, some of these jokes will have you rolling your eyes especially if you're into anime. At the very least, we got a JoJo reference out of it. This has been Sarcastic Course. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to be kept up on all my nonsense. Be sure to check out my April X Donatello video that I just did. It was a labor of hate. But I do it for you all. Peace out. Have a good one.